All right, here we have the FPV camera bracket and GoPro mount. The FPV camera mount that comes with the frame is not the actual GoPro mount. You have to purchase the GoPro mount separately. With that out of the way, let's get started. First, we're going to go ahead and grab the four golden screws. These are going to be for the arms. For the correct bottom plate orientation, you want the notch on the right and the slanted corner on the left side, as shown. The tolerances on the frame are super tight, so you will have to screw into the arms uh, to get the screws through the arm. The longer silver screw will be used as the center screw for the arm brace. One side down, one side to go. Let's go ahead and screw that into the right arm and then uh, into the left arm. Here's a better look at how the arms line up. If you're having an issue getting the screw through the arm brace, go ahead and press firmly on the outer edge of the arm brace as shown. Now we just need that center screw. Now that we have the arms on, we want to go ahead and just double check the bottom plate orientation. Now it's time for the ESC. We will be using a 20 by 20 stack uh, and then also M3 20 millimeter length screws for the stack, as well as the M3 nylon nuts to hold the screws in place. With the gummies in, let's go ahead and get this ESC mounted. And now, onto the motors. But if you didn't catch it already, we made a big mistake. We mounted the ESC in the wrong orientation. So check your work here. And with all four motors mounted, let's go ahead and get the motor wires oriented in the way that we need them for waterproofing. We're just using zip ties to temporarily hold the wires in place. This is an important stage where you need to leave enough wire length for the waterproofing kit. We're adding flux to the ESC in prep for tinning and soldering. Do 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 yeah. Now let's get the heat going and get these tinned up. Now let's tin up the motor wires and go ahead and get those soldered in. Beautiful. Now let's repeat the same for the rest of the motors. Again, the motor wire length is a crucial aspect to this in preparation for the waterproofing that we're going to be doing later. So if you happen to not leave enough motor wire length, you can always use race wire to correct your issue or to lengthen the wire if you've cut it too short. Add some flux to the XT60 connector and let's go ahead and get that soldered up as well. The flight controller we're using is going to be the Talon F7 V2 MPU 6000 with the black box. Let's go ahead and get the gummies installed. Next is the ESC wiring cable. This side is for the flight controller. This side is for the ESC. This cable is included with the flight controller. Here's some better angles of where we're at so far. For housekeeping, we usually put the wire underneath the flight controller as shown. Next is on to the receiver. We're going to be using the TBS Crossfire Nano RX. Prepping the receiver and wires for tinning and uh, soldering. Bam, looking good. In preparation, we decided to use the UARTs on the bottom of the flight controller for the Crossfire receiver. Let's go ahead and get that tinned up and soldered onto the flight controller. Here's a better look at the exact wiring. Now that that's soldered up, let's go ahead and flip the flight controller back to the correct orientation, making sure that the wiring harness wires and motor wires are not touching at all or pinched. Next, on to the VTX. Seeing that this is our analog build, we're going to be using the Unify Pro V3. It's the 5 volt edition. Let's go ahead and take the included wire and measure that out to where it's going to sit. Plug the wire into the VTX just so you know which side to snip. And go ahead and 10 and solder that up to the flight controller. And we just flip the frame around to make it easier to solder those wires in. 
Because it's a 5 volt VTX, we need to go ahead and solder up that bridge on the flight controller. Now onto the camera mount. Before the final waterproofing, we're going to be testing two different cameras, the Caddx and then also the Phoenix. Um, in the end, we ended up going with the Phoenix, but the rest of this video will show the red Caddx. Once you have your camera wire measured out, go ahead and cut that and let's prep that for tinning and soldering. We're just removing the braces to make it easier to tin and solder. Now on to the capacitor. We'll go ahead and snip these off pretty close and uh, tin and prep the wires and solder the wires to the capacitor. Once you have the capacitor in the location that you like, we'll go ahead and measure out the wires, snip them, and then solder those up to the ESC. Leaving enough wire length in preparation for the waterproofing we'll be doing later. Now let's go ahead and mount the capacitor. Um, we're going to use 3M double-sided tape and also a zip tie to hold it in place. Now we're going to check the flight controller and just make sure we're getting 5 volt in the locations that we need it. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and assemble everything, or at least all the electronics, and make sure that we're getting reception as well. Because there's OSD, the video transmitter's working, we just need to take the cap off the camera to make sure we're getting video. Now for the Crossfire binding and update process. This is the great thing about Crossfires, the over-the-air updates back to the RX. Now we're going to unlock the VTX just so we can get full power out of it and also enable smart audio. You want to check the TBS website for instructions on how to unlock the VTX based on which one you have. Good to go. Now on to the Crossfire antenna. This is something we've been uh, using for a little bit. It's called the Immortal L, uh, similar to what the uh, Mr. Steel uses, except for it's 3D printed, makes it a lot easier to make. But in the end, we ended up going with Immortal T for the final waterproofing video. Now that we've got the Crossfire receiver shrink wrapped, uh, we're going to go ahead and mount the antenna and also the back standoffs. We'll be using 3M double sided tape to mount the Crossfire receiver here and then secure it with a zip tie. Here we're going to be using a zip tie to secure the Immortal L just to prevent it from moving into the props. Next we're going to go ahead and mount the inner standoffs. These are going to be the shorter standoffs in your hardware kit as shown. Add some Loctite and you're good to go. Next we'll grab the two remaining taller standoffs and mount those at the front of the frame. Next we'll go ahead and measure out some 3M double sided tape and get that mounted to the VTX. If you're not doing race wire, these wire protectors come in pretty handy. And seeing that I forgot to put them on before I installed the motors, this is how you would do it after the fact. Just cut through them, pry them open, and then just go ahead and fit that around the wire, as shown. Bam. Now it's time to mount the FPV camera. And these are the mounting holes for it. Leave the screws slightly loose so that way it's easier to mount the bracket to the frame. Here's some different angles of how the bracket mounts to the frame. Keep the camera loose for now. Next, we're going to add the nylon screws to go ahead and secure the flight controller. Now for the top plate, we're going to go ahead and gently slide that over the GoPro mount and camera bracket. You may have to start at an angle to get it into the groove and then just press down firmly. Mount the XT60 connector to your chosen standoff and let's go ahead and start screwing in the top plate screws. The button head screws are going to go on the outer standoffs and the flat screws are going to go on the inner standoffs. Now 
Now that we have everything situated, we'll go ahead and actually mount the wire protectors, just like so. Now for some arm protection and skids, we've got two different styles for you. We chose to go with these. To get them on, start with one corner. Once you get that secured in, the other corner should just pop right on. Now let's go ahead and secure the motors. And we're almost done. Now we're gonna mount the GoPro holder. This is for the GoPro 8, and you have two standoffs that go inside of the GoPro holder. And then four screws that are gonna hold that in place on the bracket. Prepping the VTX for mounting to the top plate, we'll use a little bit of alcohol and then remove the double-sided tape to stick it to the top plate. Be mindful to leave enough room for the battery straps. Here's a better angle of the VTX mount. Now the battery straps. You get two with your kit. Let's get this GoPro in here so you can see how nice this mount is. You've got some protection here and along the side, as well as the Deep Design logo in the front. And finally, the VTX antenna, the easiest part. Last but not least, the propellers. Can't fly without those. And here's a better look at the camera mount and how the bracket protects the camera in case of crashes.